If you build it, they will come. Yeah, right. Fellow coders, if you're full of amazing ideas and have created amazing products but can't seem to get them off the ground, welcome. This is The Coder Startup, the show where smart programmers come to learn what it really takes to create, market, and sell a brand new product, and most of all, make it profitable. Now here's your host, successful software entrepreneur, Trevor Page. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number four of this Coder Startup podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As always, I am joined by my right-hand man, the man that some call in some circles, Carter the Marketer Johnson. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> What's going on, Trevor? <laughs> let's, uh, let's get the ball rolling. Uh, I just came back from a nice little walk with uh, my brand new puppy. Uh, I don't think the, the audience knows about this brand new puppy yet. Her name is Lily. She's a little Boston Terrier French Bulldog mix, and she's sleeping beside me. Hopefully, at some point, she does not wake up and does not make noise, but if she does, whatever. She'll just be barking in the background. So, um, <laughs> I'm refreshed. I'm ready to go. I'm exercised for the day. How about yourself? I'm good to go, man. Let's go. roll. So, I guess in this episode, we were just talking uh, beforehand. We've talked a little bit about um, some strategies behind building an email list, how important that email list is for uh, the, you know, the lifespan of your business. Um, and that's really, really something that I can, I cannot stress enough because I'm, I'm recently uh, been doing a lot of focus work on building my email list and, and solely focusing on that. And it's been going well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in future episodes because, uh, like I said, it's very important to talk about. But today, um, you know, like I said, we've talked about, uh, you know, how to sort of get your first dollar online. We kind of skipped a little bit of a step. We haven't yet talked about um, how you even go about deciding what product to build. So, this is a common thing that comes up. Uh, you know, either one of two things comes up. One of two questions comes up. Um, one is, I don't even have an idea. Where do I start? And the other one is, I have too many ideas. Which one do I pick? So this is a very, very common pro problem amongst, uh, you know, beginner entrepreneurs. And that's just something I think it's very important that we tackle today. So why don't we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, did you want to jump in? I know you were asking me a lot of a lot of questions about uh, how I kind of get in the zone to do work and yeah and because uh, it, it, it runs parallel to what we're talking about today um, did you want to tackle that first or wait till later what, yeah no what let's, let's let's just jump right into that so so if you guys since you're not in the know um, Carter the marketer Johnson here has hey a, a, a system that he follows in the morning he's all about systems um, he follows it I think to the T last time I I, ta I talked to him about it um, but yes, I, I'm very, very interested in knowing more details about how it's going, and I'm sure you guys are interested in knowing uh, what the all-star marketer does in his mornings every morning. So take away, Carter. <laughs> yeah. So a little background history. Um, I found myself like you know every morning I was just trying to really just put myself in the zone and trying to figure out how to kind of ramp up my mind, uh, warm up the brain, and just you know hit the pavement running. Uh, and one of the things I started looking into was what do athletes do before they get to uh, their match. And I, and I read a really interesting article. It was about uh, Phil Mickelson, one of the best golfers in the world. Mm -hmm. And they were saying how he literally would arrive at the course where the tournament was four hours prior to tee off. And his whole, his whole warm up to get himself in the zone, you know, he would have his routine of taking so many putts, hitting the driving range doing all these breathing exercises, everything else. And he was doing it four hours before he even started his match. And I was like, man, how can we you know, transition this to business, to, to the entrepreneurial life, whatever? Uh, and so I was like, hey, I need a morning routine. I need something that warms me up and puts me in the zone, um, something that I can repeat day in, day out. Uh, so I started just kind of Googling around, studying what other people – uh, we're doing, and I found this routine, uh, and we'll I'll send you the uh, the URL and the for the show notes, Trevor. Yep. But it was called the uh, the morning blast off, and I took basically what they were doing, and I kind of tweaked it and combined my own stuff, uh, and it's been working for me fantastically uh, to the point where my accountability partner, someone who I check in on a day in, day out basis, she can actually notice the days that I have done my morning routine and the days I have it uh, without me saying. So I, it's I think extremely powerful. Yeah, I think yeah, that says a lot. Yeah. So I'll, 
I'll just uh, go through real quick the things I do. And this, again, this is, this is relevant for what we'll be talking about today because it definitely warms up my brain and really gets just everything firing on all cylinders. Um, so the first thing I do is I start out with a, a two to three minute meditation. Really, that's just to kind of get my breathing going, making sure I'm getting enough oxygen, um, just kind of relaxing. I can't go past three minutes because I'll fall back asleep, I'll be honest. <laughs> but uh, I usually do it two to three minutes. Uh, after that, I uh, move into a gratitude exercise. Again, two to three minutes. And that's when I'm usually sipping my coffee, eating my breakfast. And for two or three minutes, I'll just, whatever comes out, you know, I'm, I'm making sure I'm grateful for it. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, I'm so tired. I'm like, oh, I'm grateful for this coffee. I'm grateful for this coffee. Simple things uh, in life. The simple things in life, but you know, bottom line is you're getting your your mind into a really positive uh, type of realm to work with. Uh, from that, I move in to reading. Um, I usually do ten to fifteen minutes of reading. I have a list of my favorite blogs that I follow, uh, as well as just certain news outlets. I don't pay that much attention to news, but I do. Uh, stay, try to stay up to date on industry stuff. So I'll just read for 10 or 15 minutes. Again, just warming up my brain. Um, after that, I move into um, free writing. So I'll basically just for two minutes, I'll mind dump. And I just keep an ongoing file where I just literally, whatever comes to mind, uh, just free write, get it all out. So from I'm there, in that. Do, yeah. you, do you do, is this like a, you know, are there any rules in terms of like, do you do journaling where you actually, you know, write down stuff that happened the other day or is it strictly for ideas? Or is it literally you, you just sit there for two or three minutes and whatever pops into your head, you write it down? Whatever garbage pops in my head, I write down. So sometimes it is about yesterday. Sometimes it's about what I have going on in the upcoming day. Sometimes it's just random junk that's cluttered in my mind, but I just, I'm clearing the mind again. And, and what's the reason behind, is there a reason behind that exercise? Do you see any benefits from uh, it? Yes, yes. So a long time ago, it was probably about eight years now, uh, I had someone recommend free writing to me as a way to deal with stress and anxiety. Uh, I was trying a bunch of different things and free writing was the one thing that stuck. So now I know, you know, anytime I'm really getting to the point of being stressed out or whatever, in life, I'll usually spend, you know, some good time just free writing completely, and it works. Uh, so doing it for two to three minutes every day kind of keeps that from building up. So it's a really good way of getting rid of stress before it all builds up. Sounds good to me. Yes, sir. Uh, so after that, I go into, and I know you're probably already thinking, oh my gosh, how long does all this take? Yeah. But really, it's it, you know, when you add it all up, it's thirty to forty-five minutes. So Hang tight. Uh, so after the free writing, I go into reviewing my long-term goals. So I just have all those written out, um, and I just read over them. Just Define just read long them. Long-term. Ooh. So these are like you know ten-year plus type okay. goals. So that's like very long-term. Um, yeah. So very not, very long. Not no ninety-day crap. This is long long time. This is long-term. This okay. is the the dynasty legacy type goals. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, from there, and this is the newest part of the morning blast off that I've been doing, and I absolutely love it. Uh, I spend another two to three minutes basically exercising my idea muscle. So I will pick a topic and I will just try to come up with ideas about it. So, for instance, this morning was around uh, blog distribution, and I just literally would list as many ideas until I got stuck, and then I would force myself to come up with usually three to five more. And really, you're just flexing that idea muscle. Um, it's a great exercise, and you, you really start to notice how much better you are at, at problem solving and coming up with these ideas after you you start doing it a bit. So It's like, a, it's like a, you're, you're flexing your creative muscle is how I would uh, absolutely. refer to it. Yeah, not your, yeah, I like that. Absolutely. And that's for how long? Two to three minutes. Two to three so, minutes. So again, okay. really, really quick. And what I'd recommend is just keep a visual checklist of this. It's a lot easier than trying to remember, okay, what step do I go to now? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so after, after that, let's see where we are. Then I go into reviewing what um, my day looks like, so just what I have to tackle for the day. Really quick scan of that, really easy. Uh, then I go into – I pull up YouTube and I watch 
a motivational video. Usually this lasts three to four minutes. But I keep a list of different YouTube channels or whatever, and I'll just watch it for three to four minutes. gets me hyped up. I know it's probably really cheesy. A lot of people are out there like, what is this guy talking about? Uh, and then after that, after that one's finished, I keep a uh, weekly scorecard, and I look over – you know, what are the points that I want to hit on a day in, day out basis? So, more of the process of how I'm going about doing things. Um, so, I scan over that just to remind myself uh, certain things that I'm trying to do during the day, like uh, work in 35 minute increments and take breaks. And um, I try to keep a two to one uh, action to learning. So, you know, try not to get too caught up in learning material and, and more on taking action. Just so things two, like that. Two parts action, one part learning. Exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, what is that? Eight, eight parts, I think. Nine parts, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it for about a year now, and it is night and day uh, the difference it makes in my days. Um, and you know, I, I sometimes I'll miss a day for whatever reason. Sometimes I have early meetings scheduled and stuff just falls through. Um, but I try not to miss two days in a row because it's just it's a process that works for me. So. And that's, I mean, I see, I like that. And I, what I'm probably going to do is actually adopt this. Um, I know it sounds like I'm just saying that for the podcast, but I'm serious uh, because lately I have been struggling with focus. I've been struggling with um, getting to, you know, the work that I need to do. I know what tasks I need to do, um, but I just, I, I don't know what's ha what's happening. I don't know. I've never had this problem before in my entrepreneurial career. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. two years into it as a full-time entrepreneur, and I've never had this problem. So it's just really strange uh, that all of a sudden it's like I'm hitting this burnout period where um, I'm just losing that focus. And I find myself, um, you know, wandering on Facebook or, or playing video games or watching TV or just, you mm -hmm. know, sitting down eating Um it's it's just not a good it's not a good trend that I find that's starting in me. So um, this is something I, I feel like it would really help my focus. Is that is that more or less uh, what you saw from it? That what you've gained from it is in focus, or is there even more from it? Definitely in focus. Um, I I think it goes beyond that, but I think it originally started out as something similar. I just found myself really scattered when I tried to mm -hmm. take it. And you know you hear a lot of people talk about doing like day in winding down activities to like let their body know hey it's time to go to sleep um, and I compare this to like letting my mind and my body know hey let's get in the zone it's time to hammer stuff out uh, and it it just works wonders for me and That's again awesome. I you know I'm not an architect I didn't create this I, I found what other people were doing a good job of uh, what they had experimented with what took them years to form and I I built on their shoulders as far as that goes. Yeah, so. I love it. Never reinvent the wheel. That's something that programmers know a lot about, and obviously that translates into other industries as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we can use this this um, uh, strategy, if you will, to, to, you know, get laser focused and, uh, and to start, you know, getting those creative juices going. And I think those creative juices will be helpful if... Uh, they find themselves in a situation where they want to, I shouldn't say they, where you as the listener, uh, where you want to you know, start your business, you want to get the ball rolling, uh, but you don't have an idea yet. Um, so obviously, you know, having some creative uh, juices could help in that. Um, but really, I think one of the biggest um, ways that you can go about thinking about what you want to create, what you could create, at least this is what it was for me. I, I might have mentioned it before on this show. But everything that I've done has always been to solve a problem that I have had in my own life. And I start there. So that's a good uh, way that I've gone about uh, thinking up ideas for apps um, or for, you know, full-on enterprise-level software, um, you know, applications uh, or what have you. So that's one little thing um, that I found that's worked quite well for me. Now, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's many, many other ways about going uh, about solving this problem of you know not having an idea. So do you have any, uh, any strategies, any tips, any tricks for someone who may be struggling to get started with a, with, with a brand new idea? Definitely. And uh, to, to add on what you were saying, one thing that I found myself doing uh, early on was really discounting those solutions that I came up with. And I don't know if you did that as well, but I would almost um, – a lot of times 
you know, people who are trying to to build their own business or who are bootstrapping things, we're so res- resourceful in the way we go about solving things um, that it doesn't even sometimes to me it doesn't even make sense why people would would pay for a simple solution like that. You know, it's like ah, oh, just link this and this and this and boom, you're rolling. But uh, the fact of the matter is, if you can make something a lot easier for someone, or if you can cut down steps they will have to take or just do it for them. Uh, there's there's definitely a market for that. So don't discount all those you know uh, string together solutions that you've made uh, or bootstrapped together because those are those are viable solutions that someone out there is this that could also utilize. And uh, um, just to expand on that really quickly, I'm I always get off topic. I'm sorry. Um, the uh, to to put a point on that again, I almost almost paid two thousand dollars for essentially what equates to 30 emails. So I almost paid $2,000 for 30 email templates. So these are templates that someone had used over and over again that was a proven, a proven way to, um, you know, make some good sales and do some good stuff and whatnot. Um, But you essentially would just be able to copy, paste, and use these things. And it was so intriguing to me to be able to use not only uh, it wasn't just these emails but it was also a a system that backed up these emails Um, but it was so intriguing to me that I almost spent two grand on it and if you really think about it all I'm paying for is is just words in a you know in a document I'm I'm paying two thousand dollars to get a text document so when you put that into perspective um, there's probably a lot that you can do that others would pay money for Okay, because if some, uh, as the English would say, as if some bloke can go and put, you know, a few thousand words on a piece of paper and sell it to someone else for two grand, that's impressive. <laughs> so what what can you do? And Trevor, who is, uh, oh, I met him once. He uh, he did basically the interface mock-up stuff um, for, interface mock-up. It's, is it Kinotopia? Is that it? Uh, could be. The only mock-up software I know is... Um, Oh, what the heck is that software called? Terrible. Anyway, go go. go Anyways, on. Yeah. I think I think it's Kinetopia. Don't quote me on this. Uh, and I, I feel so bad. I'm forgetting uh, the founder's name. But he basically, I met him once, um, and he the story behind that. He basically created this this whole just. Uh, it's basically a PowerPoint full of all these different icons and everything else to do wireframe design and all that and he did it because he was solving a problem it took it was such a timely process to recreate it and everything else for his team well long story short he did that a couple of years ago the the product itself has has made over i think it's like 2 million in sales mm. and he did it one sunday afternoon like Isn't he spent incredible? one sunday afternoon <laughs> um so don't discount those tools that you're creating on your own to solve your own problems yeah and i remember the one i used it was called uh, balsamic I think spelled yes. with a Q. Yeah. I've used that one before. Yes. Very similar uh, type of application. So, um, yep. but yeah, w- what else do you have for for? I know I have a, a couple of ideas for how to get the ball mm-hmm. rolling in terms of your creative juices and getting them flowing for what sort of uh, you know projects you could start up and try out. Do you have any good ones? Yeah. Well, let's say you have absolutely no idea. You have no idea where to start. Uh, what you hit on, Trevor, is great as far as looking in spaces that you really, really enjoy, things that uh, you have experience in. Uh, one step further from that is going to uh, forums and message, message boards and just seeing what people are consistently complaining about. Uh, look at products that you like to use. I mean, most products now have an API, uh, and you could build a whole business simply just going to the product's website, looking consistently of what people what features are asking for and then building an API to solve that feature uh, there's a lot of really successful businesses out there that have done that um, so I would suggest that if you have absolutely no idea where to start yeah and I mean the other thing that you could do is um, for for me you know the, what, what became what has become my primary uh, money maker if you will my primary entrepreneurial venture um, came out of me sort of realizing something, a skill I had that I didn't realize I had. So for me, it was teaching. I had no idea that I was a good teacher 
until I was put in a position at my workplace. I used to work as a, a software engineer. I was put in a team lead position and I had to teach other people um, some programming things. So I had to teach some junior programmers, um, you know, get them on my team and, and you know, show them the ropes and, and get them up to speed with all the sort of uh, business logic and, and domain stuff. And um, I realized that people on my team progressed much quicker than people on other teams. And it came down to me realizing that I was a great teacher. So I took this, what, what some people would call a, a, um, a unique uh, selling proposition, a USP, uh, my unique, uh, you know, what's it called, um, uh, advantage, uh, my unfair advantage is what some other people call it. Um, and I applied it to what I also already know and what I love. So I looked at what is it in my life that I love to do and that I have done perhaps on the weekends when I wasn't getting paid for it. What is it that I would do on the in the weekends or on the weekends in my spare time for free that I really enjoy doing? And for me, sadly, it was programming. <laughs> I I really enjoyed programming. I loved learning about new technologies. I loved applying that in my job. I loved building apps. Um, I just I was fueled by learning. So I took this realization that I had this amazing skill of teaching. And I took this love and passion for programming and I mashed the two together. And that's where my other, uh, my blog and my primary entrepreneurial venture um, was born, where I started teaching people uh, how to program with the Java programming language. Um, so that's a really good place to look at, a really good place to start if you have no ideas. Look at what are you good at? What are you better at than you know anyone else, than any of your friends? What do your friends come to and talk to you um, and ask you advice about? And, and what would you do in your free time for fun that if you never got paid for, then you wouldn't care about? Make like, sure, you know, fine, whatever, I don't get paid for this, but I'd love to do it. Um, look at all that stuff. Write it down on a piece of paper, uh, for God's sake. You know, it's, it's so easy to do this. So many people don't do this. But if you write it all down on a piece of paper, what are you good at? What do you love to do? And then just sort of mix and match. Play that game and see if you can develop some, some sort of idea around those concepts. What do you think? Oh, love it. It reminds me of uh, something that Ty Lopez, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Ty Lopez, um, and one of the things he was talking about, and this is not, it's it, very similar, but he was saying um, that to really identify that thing that you're going to be great in at life is look at what you've consistently gotten compliments about. So, you know, what you're doing that people are pointing out and like, hey, that you did a good job or that's cool, how did you do that, mm. things like that. And then the other thing is, what would you do or talk about on a Saturday night? So if you're just kicking it with your friends mm. or you're just having a real relaxed Saturday night, what is that one thing that you wouldn't mind spending a Saturday night on? Um, and that's another telltale sign of, of something that you should possibly uh, look into pursuing. Yeah, and that really makes me think about uh, this uh, venture that we're doing right now. This venture of the Coder Startup came out of me realizing that I could talk about business all day long, every day, or, you know, like you said, on a Saturday evening with my friends. And I actually do do that. And I apologize to them all the time for always saying, for always connecting, <laughs> you know, the real world stuff that I do and they do with entrepreneurship. I say, oh, isn't that interesting? The same kind of concept exists in entrepreneurship, only we call it this. And they're like, okay, Trevor. And I'm like, I know, I realize I'm talking too much about this stuff. But I mean, that was the flag. That was the flag that told me that perhaps I should just start a show um, talking about this stuff and uh, and just have fun with it. And that's exactly how this was born. So uh, I like this Ty, Lo Ty Lopez guy. Sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He's a good guy. I definitely recommend people checking checking his stuff out. He knows his stuff for sure. Does he have any books that he's published or anything like that? He has a bunch of different stuff. Okay. Let's put his uh, site in the, the show notes. Sure, what is it? Honestly, uh, it's... I don't know. You I'll don't know. Okay, we'll put it in show notes. All right. I'll write it down. Ty Lopez. I get it bookmarked. Yeah. Yeah. Ty Lopez website. I'll, I'll write it down. Yeah. Cool. All right. Great. So I think uh, any other, anything else that you can think about uh, for the people who have no idea uh, what to do, but know that they want to do something on the side? If not, uh, we can move on. Yeah. I think just, you know, really look for inspiration anywhere that kind of, um, you're drawn to if so you know if you're going to tech meetups if you're reading magazines and you you come across something that that really rings true to you or excites you uh 
start start poking around in that area. It doesn't have to be exactly what that uh, company is doing, but you might find yourself doing something very similar, and that's okay. I used to think it had to be completely new and revolutionary, and that's that's probably a good transition that's into a the, good, the That is what point. we call in the business a segue. So uh, <laughs> that will segue nicely into... Um, you know, let's say you do have an idea. Let's say you have way too many ideas. Um, you are a, a a basket case of ideas. What what? Where can you go from here? How do you choose one or two or maybe even ten or something? Narrow it down uh, so that you can move forward and not be absolutely crippled um, by the number of, of ideas that you have. Now, there's a lot going on in this in this concept and this problem that a lot of people have. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know how, how and where we want to dissect it, but I, I think I could start off with one thing, and that's very important. It's going to be a common theme with this show, I think, with entrepreneurship in general. People often get all, get all up in their own grills about, about how to proceed, how to go forward, how to move forward, how to take action. A lot of people are paralyzed from taking action, and it's usually out of fear, fear of something, fear of failure, um, fear of doing something new, um, fear of even success sometimes. And mm, they can... That's a big one for me. Oh, yeah, fear of success is absolutely a real thing. Um, and and they, they use this fear, um, but they, they don't realize they're giving into it, and it's, it's, it's shielded or it's um, shadowed by uh, things like this. With I have so many ideas, I don't know which one to pick, so I'm going to do nothing. Right, so that's a big thing, and um, and I just wanted to throw that out there. If you have anything to say about it before we move on, that's just something I wanted to say. I think, yeah, going on top of that too, Trevor. Uh, one of the reasons that that you gotta you gotta narrow down those ideas, you got you gotta focus, is because if you have ten ideas and you're working on all ten, none of them are gonna happen. Yeah. And this took me a few years to figure out. I was working on a new idea every week, and I just was not getting traction. Um, and I think it was, it was 2014, I really declared like the year of focus um, and really just, you know, harnessing down on one idea and trying to run with it. So just keep that in mind. Don't, don't worry about all the ideas. Just commit to one and, yeah. and see how far down the rabbit hole you can go. Uh, and if you find a dead end, so be it. But you're going to get a lot more traction committing to one than trying to uh, plant all these different seeds. Yeah. Uh, well, you can, you can plant all the different seeds. Just attack them one at a time and follow them until you feel like they're done or, or you've achieved the success that you want to achieve um, from each one of them. So the uh, there's two things that come to mind. The first is the uh, – I think it's a, is it a Chinese proverb with the you know man who chases two rabbits will catch none. Um, or something mm. like that. It's something I mm -hmm. might have butchered it, but that's a good little saying. <laughs> and the other one is from uh, John Dumas, who's the uh, host of the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. He has a good um, sort of acronym for the word focus, and he says that focus is to follow one course until success. Um, I mm. love that. I love. That. I don't know if he yeah. made that up himself. Actually, no, he didn't. I think he stole it from someone else. But now I'm stealing it from him. Um, so credit being due where credit is due. Um, I love that one. Follow one course until success. And that often comes up in my mind um, whenever I do think up a new idea. I say, now, hold on a second. Should I really pursue this? And I know that this is something like you said, Carter, you struggled with. Uh, but this is also something that's very real. Um, and it's only lately that I really feel like I'm getting on track, even though I'm having trouble uh, getting the work done day in and day out. I do have a plan. I do know mm -hmm. the direction I need to go, and I do feel confident that it is the right direction. So therefore, I, I, I feel good about my overall situation as a human being, being an entrepreneur. So this is um, something that you can never take for granted, that feeling. Uh, but anyway, one way to get to it is, like you said, follow one course until success. Now, mm -hmm. how do you know which course to follow? <laughs> How do you know which of those hundred things you should nail down and um, and go forward with? So, I don't know. What do you think? What are some some tips that we can give to someone with you know ten ideas and how how to choose just one of them? Well, how about this? I'll tee off with my my favorite way, and Beauty. this is just this is just me. But uh, I used to think if, and I remember you know my dad pointing this out to me when I was like. 12 years old and sketching out business and product ideas and bringing them to them. I used to think if there was anything like it already on the market, 
then the idea was a wash. Hmm. I used to think like every idea I had had to be completely original, completely new, everything else. Uh, and it wasn't until uh, I think it was when we were going through the foundation, maybe Trevor, yeah, how I Trevor so. and I met, that that I realized it's almost the complete opposite. If you see if you see people out there doing something very similar or trying to solve the problem you saw you're you're trying to solve, that means there's a market for it. They've already validated that idea. They already have basically found out that people will pay for this. It's almost when you should run for the hills when uh <laughs> when you find yourself all alone, you know, trying to solve a problem that no one else is even uh embarking on. So Keep that in mind. Look for competition and know that's a good thing. So many entrepreneurs when they're starting out, they, they fear competition. Uh, now I won't even pursue an idea unless I can find competition. Nice, yeah. And I mean, yeah, think about, you know, I think about myself and, you know, how many people out there have already written books on, you know, how to learn how to program, especially with the Java programming language. It's one of the most popular programming languages out there. Um, how many people have already, you know, started blogs about it? How many people have already started podcasts about it? Um, you know, I'll give you a hint. It's probably in the hundreds. So that wasn't something that deterred me. That was something that excited me because obviously, like Carter said, that means that there is a market. If there was no market for this, the ideas would have started. Someone would have tried to launch it. They would have gone bankrupt or they would have gotten bored with it because no one was saying anything. No one was interacting. No one was engaging with it. No one was signing up. No money was being made. So it goes away. So if there's nothing like it else out there like it, most likely that means that it's going to be a failure, okay? It's probably the 1% of time that you're going to hit on an idea that everybody wants to pay you for, and that's just, that's something that maybe we can wait in our careers for. Maybe when we're, we've got 10 years in the bag as an entrepreneur, then we can pursue something like that. Um, but for absolute beginners, do not fall into that, um, that trap. Do not do it. Well, and look at uh, look at this too. If you if you study the greatest businesses, the headline businesses, the one that everybody is, you know, talking about as far as the big buyouts or whatever, look at even what they've done. They weren't the first to market. They didn't create the wheel. Yeah. Facebook was like the third, fourth, fifth social network, yeah. something like that. Google was Google, the fourth, I think. Yeah, it. They were not the first movers, and that's another, you know. Another great thing to realize that let someone else figure out all the hard stuff. Go in there with your idea and improve on it. Uh, you know, build on the shoulders of giants. Tony Robbins talks about that all the time. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Nice. So, let's say that you've managed to somehow you you've you've scoped it out. You've you've seen that there are no other products like the one that you have. You know, in your mind. Um, so you, you've ruled those out. That's not a good idea to pursue. You found a few that have, let's say, a lot of competition. Let's say you've had three ideas, three products, possible products that you could create um, where there's a, you know, plenty of competition, therefore uh, a good market for it. Um, how do you narrow it down to maybe just the one? What can you do to make that happen? I think the big thing is you go straight to the market and validate it, whether that's jumping on a call with people or... Uh, getting in front of someone in person, but basically just validating that, hey, this is a actual uh, problem or opportunity in the market and um, just making sure that the end user would actually use it. Uh, the downside about this is usually people are uh, naturally polite and all, so you're going to get a lot of, oh, yeah, I'd love that or I'd use that in a heartbeat. Um, Don't so be tricked by those words, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I have been tricked so many times. I probably said it on the podcast before. Do not, yes. if a whole bunch of people say that's a great idea, don't do it until, what's the magic word? Uh, the pre-sale? Is that what you you're getting? You get the money. <laughs> money talks. Yes. So. so if you can get somebody, if you can basically, you know, show, uh, and that's that's where uh, the sticky point is because it's, it's one of those catch-22s. Like people are like, oh, I'm not going to give you money unless you have something. And you're like, well, I'll have something if you give me money. Um, so a good compromise for that is basically, you know, creating a bootstrap version or, or something very, very simple. And that's a whole nother show that we can talk about. Yeah, that's um, your MVP, but, your minimum viable yeah, product. 
Yeah. So narrow down those three ideas, go validate it with the market, and then start doing some more digging. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me I need to pick up the phone and call people to, to do this validation thing you're talking about? I hate calling people. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's one way. Uh, I'll tell you a few of my favorites. Going to local meetups, hop on meetups, you know, dot com. Look for the, uh, the industry. Go to trade shows. Golly, there's always trade shows at convention centers in cities. Uh, just talk with people. Be friendly. Just ask them, you know, what they like or don't like about the current solutions in the market. Um, it, you know, there's tons of ways to go about doing this, but basically, you the worst mistake you can make at this at this stage is getting really excited about an idea, sitting in your basement and working like crazy to get it out the door, only to find out that nobody is going to use it. Yeah. So. And I, I, I've, I've had source. that happen to me. I don't know if I've said this, but um, I spent three, I'm sure I've said this, two years on the product, developing it, yeah. three years trying to sell it to get one customer paying me $800 a year. So that's like, I don't know how many hours of work I put into it, but that probably equated to somewhere around 50 cents an hour is what I've made off of that entire venture. Um, yeah. Just so horrible. Horrible. So take Trevor's uh, five-year lesson yeah. and add a... a drastic learning curve to that so that then um, that's why it's worth it to just pick up the bloody phone and talk to people talk to your friends um talk to don't talk to your parents maybe they're gonna probably buy your product your parents always end up buying your products um but i got uh, a good idea okay go for somebody, it somebody somebody told me this once and i thought they were idiots when they said it but now i'm like no that's perfect Go to the most negative person you know. Go to the person who hates life. I'm serious. Wait, stay with me on this one. Go to the person who is absolutely the world is against them. Tell them what you're going to do. Tell them you know, how you're going to do it and just listen. Listen for all the reasons why they're going to say that it can't be done or you won't. it won't work, blah, blah, blah. And they're, what they're actually doing is giving you a list of just – the, the items that you've got to figure out. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's that's so, the rebuttal when someone says, I'm not going to pay you for that because blah. Yes. And then you could say, aha, but, you know, you'll be able to respond with your, hopefully, your well-crafted um, speech around why that uh, is not a valid issue. Yeah. So if you have an evil mother-in-law or something like that, <laughs> invite her over for dinner and tell well, her what you're going to do. Let's not get that listen. crazy. We don't need to have dinner. Here. We could probably pick up the phone and call her. Or, or by all means, Facebook the woman. There um, you go. Another case, in any case, I want to add uh, one nice resource that uh, that might help. You mentioned going to trade shows, which I love that idea, talking to people who would be in your market. Um, mm -hmm. uh, go to lanyard.com, L-A-N-Y-R-D.com. Uh, I found it a while back. It's It's a search engine for events. You can discover events that are going down, conferences uh, that are going down near your location. Um, fantastic for uh, getting past that little hurdle. Because I know before I was like, well, I don't know what conferences are going on. I'm not subscribed to a bunch of, you know, membership sites that are emailing me about this stuff. So um, I found lanyard.com and it was really cool. So uh, check it out. And it will be intimidating the first time you do it, uh, first few times. But just get out there and do it. It's it's fun to fall on your face, and uh, you'll laugh about it in about a year after you've uh, <laughs> you've done it a few times. Totally. All right. So, uh, where do we go from here now? Where what's uh, what's a good next step? We probably have another. Let's get a you know five more minutes in of good you know solid content before we sign off. Um, what else can we talk about? Well, let's end on a high note. Let's let's say you do all this. You're having fun. Uh, you got an idea you want to work on. The best thing you can do next, so you don't get overwhelmed, so you don't quit before it gets really tough, make a list of things that are absolutely so simple you cannot fail as far as as far as far going about this. Um, I mean, literally, it can be as easy as like what Trevor suggested, hopping on Lanyard and finding other events to go talk to people. Whatever it is, just, just brainstorm, use that idea muscle creating strategy just sit down and let it flow and make a list of things that it, you cannot fail at. Hmm. That's that's what I love to tell people. Yeah, you just got to move move the ball, get the ball rolling. Uh, what's the expression? I've been playing some Madden 2015 of late, 
And um, I'm not a football guy at all, but I've been picking up the lingo. I think they call it move the chains. Is that a moving football? the chains, my moving man? Moving the chains. That's a football expression, if you will. I'm so proud of you right Isn't now, that Trevor. Cool? Oh man, I'm such a cool guy. I watch football, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't. Oh, no, you don't it. watch football. You play football. I play football. <laughs> I'm doing this. I think it's the Seahawks. I'm totally cheating. Did they win last year or something? Oh my gosh, you're embarrassing yourself now, Trevor. Oh yes, no. they won. They, they won last year. There we go. I'm they playing did. as the Seahawks. I figured I have the best chance of winning with the um, the most, uh, I guess, advanced or powerful team. So. Anyway, so move those chains. Move those chains. Get the ball rolling. Go to those conferences. Speak to someone about this. Um, and I think, like we said, most most important of all is to try to get them to pay you ahead of time. I know it's scary, but it's going to save you a lot of frustration in the end because the more people who are willing to throw money at you before you've even built this thing, um, the, the, the greater the chance that this idea or business will succeed. All right? Mm-hmm. It's great if you can get three people to pay you ahead of time. It's fantastic if you can get five. It's a home run if you can get ten. Um, and it just gets better and better from there. So uh, get them to pay you up front. And one strategy that, that you know we learned when we were going through this thing called the Foundation Together, this course on how to start a business, um, is you can sort of bribe them into giving you the money by saying, look... This product is going to do X, Y, Z. It's going to solve these problems, these pains in your life. Um, and if you give me the pre-order, if you pay up front, let's say you pay for three months up front for the product. Let's say you're paying monthly. You're going to charge monthly for this product. If you pay me three months up front right now, I will give you X number of percent discount off of the product for life. So that is one strategy that tends to get people saying, oh, well, that's interesting. I wouldn't mind mm-hmm. a lifetime discount if I you know, were to invest right now. And then to sort of settle their concerns, you can say, look, if I cannot you know, scrape together enough interest or enough cash or whatever to fund the project or to make it happen or what have you, I'll just refund your money. It's no, no hard feelings. I'll give it back to you. There's no risk. So you know, what you're going to get in the end is the product that solves this problem for you um, at this price, whatever the price may be for, let's say, three months up front. Could be more, could be less, however you want to do it. Um, and you're going to get a lifetime discount. You're going to pay the lowest price for this product that I will ever charge in the lifespan of this product. Like that is a very powerful thing to be able to tell someone that they only paying the lowest price because everybody has a little bit of cheapskate in them and uh, and that uh, that will definitely move the chains for them. So, what do you think? Love it. Love it. I think we've uh <laughs> I don't want to make anybody's uh, brain explode. Yeah. I think we've covered a lot today, so we can definitely dive into to more of that stuff maybe on the next episode. Yeah, who knows? I don't know where we're going to go from here, but God, there's so much to talk about with this stuff. Like I said, I, I have a, um, a little experiment on the go here with respect to um, getting more people to sign up for my email list. And that is something I definitely want to be talking about in the future because those are big lessons to be learned um, for the past two years of, of my life as an entrepreneur. Um, I sort of, I think, have culminated to this one moment um, in, in my career as an entrepreneur. It all came up to this one day. It was a Sunday afternoon where I did this one thing that, um, that really made a big difference in my email list growth. Um, so I can't wait to share that with you guys. Stay tuned. If we talk about the next episode or maybe a few after that, you will not want to miss it. So to wrap up, I guess you guys, if you uh, want to know more about this episode, if you want to get the links for it, maybe you're listening to this uh, in the car or you're on your walk or you're working out or what have you, um, you can go to coderstartup.com forward slash Five, the number five, not spelled out with letters. We are lazy. We want to do the quickest thing possible. I thought it was five. four. No, uh, is it four or five? Maybe we're on four or five. I don't even know anymore. Uh, this is four. I wrote down five on this my. This is four. This is definitely four. <laughs> See, this is it's unedited, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we roll. So sorry. Coderstartup.com slash four. Or you can go to slash five. I'm sure those show notes are going to be great too. Um, you can go there, check it out, and uh, and hey, maybe even sign up for our email list. Who knows? You can get uh, quality information from two dudes that seem like they know what they're doing in the entrepreneurial circle. So um, why not? You got nothing to lose. All right? Cool. So thank you, as always, very much, Mr. Carter Johnson, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Um, I can't wait to see you in the next fun. episode. All right. So take care of yourselves, everyone. Have a great day, and bye for now.